And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Star Tropolis. Now, this is Star Tropolis Second Edition. I actually never played the original Star Tropolis, but I did play a prototype of Star Tropolis back in the day. So keep that as a disclaimer. This was actually pitched to me as a possibility for the Dice Tower Essential line, and I actually very seriously considered it. I thought the game had some flaws, though, which, incidentally, are not in this game. They've changed it considerably since then. Uh, one of the other problems with the game was the, the game itself is about it's a tile laying game, but it's a three-dimensional one. You're building a three-dimensional plastic starship. That requires a lot of plastic, so there's not a lot of companies that can do that. But Peterson Games, they can. So today we're going to take a look at Star Tropolis, and I'll be right back. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to get a uh, alien, along with a matching piece here that's going to go on this revenue track. Uh, that's going to show how much money you're going to get from round to round. Players are going to start with 14. Remember that money is victory points. Players are also going to get a turn order card, uh, first, second, third, and last. And this will show in what order you will buy stuff, and then what order you will attach stuff to the space station. This is the core module. This is what starts the space station up. As the game goes by, you will be attaching different sections to that to build a three-dimensional space station. The first part of each phase is players are going to be purchasing modules. And you'll notice there's different types of modules out there. Players actually have a card that shows you how each module works. There are different colors of modules, but that's only to basically tell you uh, apart who owns what. So if I own the yellow one, uh, if I own the yellow habitation module and you own the pink one, we know who owns each one. There's one module for each color that's out there. So the player's turn, and remember, we're following these cards for order of purchasing. You can buy one of these. The cost is up here, although if you buy the third, fourth, fifth, or sixth card, you have an additional cost above them. If you buy a card, you pay that much, you take the card, and you're going to also get a clip that's going to go with that card, which we'll talk about in a second. And then we just keep adding cards from the deck so that there's always more out there. A player can also say, I don't want to buy any of these, pick one to discard. If you discard these, you got to pay more money, so there's no point doing that. And then you get five money or five million from the bank. And then finally, there's a small pile here of civic modules. These are pretty cheap. You can always buy one of these instead of one of the face-up ones down here. However, if you do that, again, you need to discard one of these. After that, in reverse player order, players are going to attach the modules to the spaceship. So you'll take this here and you'll pick and you'll decide where you want this to go. It has to be able to fit in. It has to be able to touch everything else in there. And then you're going to get points here. So this one, for example, this gives you, it just has a special rule. Only one of each module type can attach to it. And the money it gives you is the number of connections that you have. So this currently only has one connection. So that is great. It's going to give me six million. The more things that are connected to it, though, you can see I have to keep track. My income will go down. So I mark on the track that this is bringing me in six million. So this is a great one to build early on in the game, seven million to give me six million for several turns. Pretty good. But other people are probably going to spend time going, oh, well, I'm going to start attaching things to this. So the different kinds of modules that you add are going to be attached in different ways. And you can see that the space station is going to grow. And as you pick it up, you're trying to figure out the best way to place things on this spaceship. There's some rules. The only rules that really matter are these um, solar panels. They just have to be placed so they're like the farthest thing out on each side that they're in. But uh, we found that when you're placing this on the, the ground, sometimes we're trying to figure out the best way to put it. So we would just hand it from one person to another. But the space station is going to grow as well as player's income. Real quick, you can see the different kinds of modules. This one gives you 7 million minus 1 for each connection. The solar module gives you 2 plus 1 for every other solar module you have. The Civic Center gives you things based on your, your income equals whatever your first, second, third, fourth card is, and that's going to change whoever is in last place income-wise will get the first player thing each round. This gives you millions of dollars based on the, the, you, the more connections, the better. It's the opposite of the habitation. This gives you income for each connection. This gives you if it's connected to two of the same type, and then the core modules is a wild, counts as anything.
There's also a whole separate expansion that comes, another whole box with more module ships in it, and these are printed on the back here. So these are the different types of modules. That's it, that's the whole game. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get your income at the end of a round, and then that's the revenue phase. And after a certain number of rounds, seven for a two player game, five for a four player game, and on the last round, everything here in this market is half price. And then you will add up all the money that you have and whoever has the most money is the winner. So let's talk about components because they are a bit of a mixed bag here. The cards with the clips on, that works. Normally I'm not a big fan of putting clips on cards, but these slide on real easily. Uh, they move also, and at most you're gonna have five or six of these in front of you. So it's not that hard. You will have to keep track. The cards themselves are plasticky, which I'm not a big fan of. I really hate this board because these tokens that you place there, let me, let me put them out for you. These are the five different alien tokens. They all look the same. They like took a piece of that alien, and the only one that's easy to tell is the glass attack or talk or whatever it is. Um, the other ones all look very similar to each other. They're also funkily made here to fit on this track. Just weird. I would rather just have a wooden disc or something. The uh, tokens, these are nice, thick tokens for money, and there is a ton of them. Now, the weird thing is the space station itself. So this is pretty cool. I mean, they had Peterson Games as the one who made this, and they know how to make plastics for Cthulhu Wars. This fits together well, but I'm always worried about it. I'm always worried that it's going to break because these are long square tokens, so they only go in one way. So there have been times where I put something like this, and I'm like, nah, let me rotate it. You can't rotate it. These aren't Legos, and they don't twist off. You have to pull them straight off. So because of that, I am very concerned that it's going to break. Mine hasn't broken yet, but we've been very careful with it, but it feels a little fragile. That being said, it looks so awesome. I mean, as you see this, you can imagine a space station looking like this, and there are so many other pieces I haven't even put on it yet. So this is kind of a good and bad thing about it. The rules are great, and I especially like that the rule book includes the expansion stuff if you want to. Play it, you don't have to look at another rule book because the expansion is really just adding a bunch more modules. It's an easy one to throw in the game. Now, I like Star Tropolis. There's a couple things from keeping it being fantastic, so I'll mention those first. I'm not convinced that for some players, it will often be advantageous if you have some nice income, set up your first few turns, to at the, the last couple turns just take money. Because you, when you're buying something, you have to make sure that the income it gives you is worth, is more than just taking five. And I don't understand why the just taking money is not allowed on the last turn. And I think as a house rule, I would just say you can't take money on the last turn or you can pass and do nothing. Because even at half price, let's say a module is four, that module has to give you at least 10 for it to be worth it and, and even, if, you know, it can make other modules go up, of course, and do different things for you to, to, to get a, a difference of six rather than just taking five. So that's kind of, eh, that I found to be, that the last turn feels like it, it needs a boost in the arm in that regard. You have to realize going in it, this is not a long game. It is, you are building in a four-player game, five modules. I think a three-player game is better just because building six feels invariably better than building four, five. But that's it. You are buying one, taking some time, take your time, place it on the outside of the ship. It's not a very big game, so that needs to be kept in mind. This is the kind of game that I might play a couple times and add the points together. But it is streamlined. It works well. Everything just kind of slides into place. I do think getting the expansion is a pretty good idea just because it gives you a lot of different modules to play with and there's different things, but the base game works fine. I played with just the base game. The advantages the expansion gives, it gives you special abilities for the factions, which I don't think are necessary, and, but, and again, more modules. Uh, so, ah, this is kind of a weird one. People who are like, oh, I want Cthulhu Wars and this big plastic fighting game. That's not what this is. This is a... You know, essentially, it's a tile placement game, but done so in a three-dimensional thing. And so you're going to have times where people are going to be taking that device, that space station, that's in outer space, 
and manipulating it in different directions, trying to figure out the best thing. So there's a little bit of maybe, you know, slow play there. But because you're only putting so a few on over the course of the game, that's it. And since the money you pay is your points, there's going to be some fairly thoughtful decisions. The game is smaller than it appears, but it's a cool, really neat concept. I just played another game that had only five turns in it, and I thought that game was too small. There wasn't any game there. This one feels like it gets close to that, but it feels cool enough. The theme and everything else elevates it a bit that I think a lot of people will enjoy this one. So that's Star Tropolis. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment approved. <laughs>